Broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio inside the Sonesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel. It's time for Gwinnett Business Radio. Gwinnett Business Radio is cared for by Eastside Medical Center, providing quality care to Gwinnett County and the greater Atlanta area for over 38 years. And welcome to Gwinnett Business Radio. We're broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio in the beautiful Sonesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel. And this is a very special edition of Gwinnett Business Radio. Mike Salmon and joining me is a very special guest, Matt Stinchcomb, former Georgia football player, former NFL football player. And today we're going to talk about the Gwinnett County Sports Hall of Fame. The induction ceremony is coming up. And Matt, thanks for coming by the studio. I can't thank you enough for, for having me on. This is it's a fantastic opportunity to talk about a, a really important event for this county. Before we talk about the, the Sports Hall of Fame and everything that's, that's going to be happening on Wednesday, May 1st, for those that may not be familiar with you, they're probably not Georgia football fans or football fans in general. You're a former uh, All-American at UGA offensive lineman. That's right. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't athletic enough to do anything else. You're just getting someone's way. <laughs> Able to push people around That's a little right. bit. That's exactly and right. And went on to the NFL. I think you played about seven years before injuries. Just said, okay, that's enough. Let's go. Let's get a real job. Yeah, that, that's right. Let's re-enter the real world. Yeah, before my anatomy said, that's uncle. It's time to tap out. <laughs> yeah, the Raiders and uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, first round pick in 1999. You're the older brother. Your younger brother, John. Also an NFL player right. and a UGA All-American as well. And you're currently working in the insurance business with David Green, who's a former Georgia quarterback NFL player. And you work in the insurance business with David. That's right. Yep, Were yep. you guys in school at the same time? We weren't. Actually, David, uh, South Gwinnett grad. Uh, obviously, my brother John and I both Parkview graduates. Uh, so Gwinnett County guys, and John being about four years behind me, he and David were similar in age. Even David's, David's still cutting off the crust off his peanut butter sandwiches. I mean, he's, he's 36 years old. He's five or six years younger than us. <laughs> but that's how I knew him. You know, he was, a, he was John's roommate at the University of Georgia. And so we never got to play together. Um, I played with the Bobos, the Quincy Carters, and uh, John got the David Greens of this world. Not, not a bad trade, I don't think, for him. Yeah, not too bad. And uh, you're doing some college football analysis these days and stuff on the SEC network as well. So you're staying busy. Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm spinning plates and juggling knives. But it's a lot of fun, especially in the fall. And, and uh, of course, in the spring, too, we pretend like there's football to be talked about. So we, we try to cram that in uh, this time of year as well. And you mentioned you're a Parkview Panther, so yeah. local boy does good. Yeah, well, I mean, listen, um, when we got to Parkview, it was a great school, great, uh, great baseball school, great basketball school. It was not a great football school. And so we were, I was kind of on the front end of that wave that came through. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, little brother John won a state championship, and then I think they went undefeated for three straight years with the, uh, the Clint Salmons and the Jeff Rancours of this world. And, uh, and they're still doing really well. Former teammate of mine, the head coach at Parkview now. When were you at, uh, at Parkview? The reason I ask is I, I, in the 90s, I actually called some Parkview games on the radio. Oh, did you? Yeah, All yeah right. the Gwinnett County Game of the Week. Hey, well, and I, I'd imagine we would have wedged a couple in there. You know, yeah. we, uh, I graduated in 95. I was there 92 to 95. And I think in 92, we won two games and we're thrilled to have won those two games. I mean, that was a big deal. I think we beat Burke Marr and Duluth that year. And Duluth was in a classification below us, and we were still thrilled to have beaten them. So, you know, a lot's changed since, since that time. Well, not too long ago, you were inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame, and you're also a member of the Gwinnett County Sports Hall of Fame. And that's what we're here to talk about because you got the 10th anniversary induction ceremony and dinner coming up. Tell us all about it and what's going to be happening. Well, it's, it's proven to be. It's really grown, this event. And it made total sense, really, when you think about uh, the athletes, the talent, the successes that have come from Gwinnett County Schools to find a way, and it just so happens this is in the athletic realm, to recognize those achievements, not just at the high school level, but a lot of, of the inductees, uh, if they're afforded that opportunity, if their sport gives, it gives them a chance to participate at the professional level, they have, uh, and many still are. So th the idea that you could harness the interest in and around sports, just in this part of the country, but certainly in this county, yeah. and, and kind of redirect that enthusiasm to the school system and in very meaningful ways. That's what this night is really all about. Let's recognize some of the outstanding talent that has emerged from the schools in this county, but also uh, let's see if we can't benefit the current students and some of them obviously current student athletes in a really impactful way, support the schools, 
see if we can't uh, it funds scholarships it really fosters a lot of innovation in the classroom it, 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 it actually grants monies and funding to teachers so there's a lot of meaningful resources and needs that are being met because of uh, this event and this night I don't think a lot of people realize the, the caliber of, of athletes and coaches that are from Gwinnett County. Yeah. When you look at some of the past inductees, it's like, wow. I mean, you could, you could have all-stars in every sport just about. Oh, you really could. I mean, the difficulty is not finding who to recognize. It's trying to sequence, you know, when can you recognize them. Uh, you know, as we mentioned, a lot of them are still playing. I mean, a lot of, a lot of them are, are incapable of coming back to be able to, to be recognized in person. And more than anything, it's figuring out, okay, look, it's not that uh, you aren't worthy of Hall of Fame recognition. It's when can we actually get you back home, so to speak, so that you can be front of, uh, of some of your fellow alumni in front of your school, uh, in front of your home county, yeah. so that we can um, pay them the, the proper respect for the contributions that they've made to the sporting world and, and to this county indirectly. You're on the board, so what do you try to limit to six a year? You know, I, there, there's nothing hard and fast necessarily, but the thing is, is that there is a certain level of exclusivity. Now, the truth is, we could probably induct 30, and they'd all be worthy of it. And yeah. We could do it for the next 30 years and never run out. And of course, it just builds with each graduating class from from the schools here in this county. But you also want it to be look. People have homes. You know, they've got children back at the house. They've got jobs. You can't keep them there all night long. So you induct 30 people. You can't really pay the proper respect, I think, and give them the time that they deserve. Six. Uh, it happens to be around that number this year, but there's nothing really hard and fast. We could we could induct a lot of folks into this Hall of Fame. I know I've been to some other induction ceremonies. I think they were at the Infinite Energy Center, and I just noticed looking here at the flyer, it's going to be right here at the Senesta this year. So that's very cool on Wednesday, May 1st. I think we've buried the lead a little bit here. Your speaker this year yeah. is? Yeah, it's Nick Saban. And, and, and you, How'd the, you get Nick? That's not important, Mike. Okay. No, I, no I'm, I'm kidding. Hey, listen, it, it, it's no secret. You can look at, at the roster at Alabama or any school, for, for that matter, whether, whether it's a, a local university, the athletes, especially in the sport of football, but it can be others, that emerge from this county. If Georgia is one of the sweet spots for recruiting, and, and this is for yeah. many sports, but certainly football, then Gwinnett County is the honey hole. I mean, this really is the bullseye of the target. And you can look at surrounding universities that compete at a very, very high level. And we're talking about outside the University of Georgia. You, know, you could throw in Georgia Tech, but obviously the Clemsons, the Tennessees, the Auburns, the Alabamas, uh, where are they wanting to recruit? They spend a lot of time in Metro Atlanta. And if they're smart, they spend most of their time in Gwinnett County. So I think that part of the reason why you're capable of getting a, a speaker of coach Saban's caliber and there are business leaders out there that want to attend conferences where he is presenting because he's a fantastic leader and I think you know his processes the process as it's known at Alabama is applicable well outside of a locker room or a football field it makes sense in a broader context certainly in business organizations as well so it's just fantastic uh, to have a speaker of his caliber and of his profile at an event like this, and I think it's fitting given the, the type of athletes that are being recognized. Nick Saban, as a coach, and I want to get your opinion because you, you, know, you played college football, you played in the NFL. A lot of folks say, oh, anybody could coach at Alabama because it's Alabama. The players will come there. Some forget that before he got there, they went through some tough times. No what is it about Coach Saban that has not only put him at the top of the heap but kept him there for so long? I think it's his ability to introduce – uh, the infrastructure that is needed to harness that amount of energy and enthusiasm that surges through Alabama football's program. The, the biggest piece of it, I think, is his ability to marshal resources, to focus those efforts, those resources in meaningful ways. They have changed the way uh, college football programs are built. And you could see it's, it's probably most closely replicated in Clemson, South Carolina as evidenced by two national championships out of the last four that have been played. Mm -hmm. uh, most recently, obviously, this past one. But I think his ability to take it, and it's a good point that you make, uh, Alabama's had other head, had other head coaches, and none of them other than one, being the legendary Paul Bear Bryant, has had this level of success. It's, the, it's not right. just the excellence. It's the consistency of excellence. It's the ability to replicate excellence. It's the ability to garner interest from really talented people knowing that you're going to have to wait your turn to be able to demonstrate that talent and in the meantime not only to avoid indifference 
to avoid uh, boredom, but to have that talent, uh, not just waiting its turn, but continually kind of honing their craft to the point where they do get that opportunity. That makes sense in, in just about any organizational application. And what he's been able to do there is nothing short of remarkable in a time where you're only getting players for two or three years. Imagine turning over employees and, and the idea is you only get them for two or three years. They're student athletes, there's no doubt, but the product on the field is, is quite literally the contributions of people. And if you had to turn over who those people are constantly, you better have a system in place that allows you to replicate high-level performance. Wow. We're talking with Matt Stinchcomb, former All-American college football player at UGA, former NFL offensive lineman, also on the board for the Gwinnett County Sports Hall of Fame. And they got the induction ceremony and dinner coming up on Wednesday, May 1st, here at the Sinesta Gwinnett Place, Atlanta. We could go talk sports all day, but I do want to ask you, a lot of Georgia folks want to know your opinion, of course, with Kirby Smart. Can he bring that level of success to Georgia? It looks like they're well on their way. You know, he, he nearly has, right? You yeah. can't get any closer to a national championship than the one that Georgia nearly realized two seasons ago. And obviously, you look at the SEC championship where they met Alabama again, a, a, a near miss, if yeah. you want to call it that. Again, still a miss. So no one's walking around with uh, the consolation prize on their shelves. But at the same time, what Georgia what Georgia's been able to do under Kirby Smart's leadership, I think, is to recapture some of the energy that was there when Mark Richt first took the job. Uh, you know, Georgia is, I think, a fantastic example and somewhat analogous to Alabama and that there's a great deal of enthusiasm. There was tremendous upside and probably – uh, I think something that can be characterized as unrealized potential for quite some time. There was a strobe and fade under the Richt years, but make no mistake, Mark Richt made that program what it was, uh, where it is now, capable of be, being where it is now, and changed, I think, the complexion and, and the perception of what Georgia football was. And now Kirby Smart, especially with his recruiting prowess, has kind of taken that to the next level. At the end of the day, the lifeblood of any college program is talent acquisition and, you know, in some ways retention, although that's becoming more and more challenging as the college, uh, the collegiate model changes. That said, he has done a really good job uh, in, in a short period of time of making Georgia not only relevant and then from a national championship perspective, but more than competitive with the elite programs. All right, let's get on to the event happening on Wednesday, May 1st. Of course, Nick Saban is the speaker. You've got a pre-event mixer and a silent auction. Then Coach Saban will speak. Then the induction ceremony and a beautiful dinner here at the Sinesta. Talk about the class of 2019 that will be inducted this year. Well, you know, you look at the diversity across the county. So you got a number of different schools represented. If it's not a Norcross or South Gwinnett graduate, a Shiloh graduate, Brookwood, you know, to me, some of it's kind of a nod. You look to the, the years when I was in, in uh, high school here in Gwinnett County, and these are some of the cornerstone high schools, if you will, founding members, maybe, uh, if you want to look at it that way, of the athletic prominence of Gwinnett County and, and Brookwood probably being on the leading edge of that for years and years, certainly from a football perspective. So it's fitting that a Rennie Curran linebacker, an undersized guy, coming out of Brookwood High School, goes to the University of Georgia, was an outstanding football player. But you've got representatives from Norcross with Coach Angie Hembry, obviously uh, uh, one of the, the better basketball coaches. She was also at Collins Hill as well. David Seville uh, out of Norcross, who is uh, at Clemson now. Uh, Mickey Kahn, now coaching at Clemson, former Grayson head coach. You know, a Dabo Sweeney's roommate in college back at Alabama. So there's, there's kind of that common thread there in that regard. Uh, coach Sawyer, John Sawyer uh, from South Gwinnett, a great coach of, of, uh, in the sport of baseball. So you, it's not just different uh, high schools represented. Uh, it's different sports being represented. And also, I think, an acknowledgement that there are ways to contribute in the sporting world that where you'll never set foot in a, in, on a court or on a field. Maybe you don't ever – you never enter a pool – and at the same time, you can contribute in very meaningful ways, and that's worthy of recognition as well. And, and, and that's where you've got uh, folks like at David Seville, if they get their recognition that they deserve. And this is a big deal. This is the 10th anniversary, and I know I went last year when Bobby Cox was speaking, a yeah. huge crowd. 
I'm thinking with Nick Saban, it's going to be even bigger this year. I'm wondering if the Sinesta is even big enough <laughs> for all the folks that you might be expecting. Hey, hey, that's a blessed problem to have, yeah. and, and, and I, we would love to, to blow them out into the hallways if we absolutely had to. Bobby Cox did a great job last year. I mean, some of those stories he was telling on Greg Maddox and Tom Glavin were, yeah. just, were just fascinating. And then and having fun. Frank Cora be oh, inducted, yeah. so it was a perfect fit. No doubt. Yeah, th- it made total sense. And, you know, obviously with Coach Saban coming in, and the six national titles and the experiences that he's had across not only the collegiate landscape, but also spent some time in the professional ranks and his ability, I think, to not only speak to just not just his sport specifically, but as we're talking about some some general principles that apply way outside of, of an athletic context. We're expecting a, a pretty big crowd. And I hear he's a great speaker. I've had a chance yeah. to interview him many times having worked in the media and a lot of folks are familiar with how he is with the media but when you get him away from that he's he's completely different it's it's not the coach speak he, he's got a great personality and he's a funny guy sure but he just kind of hides it a lot from the media yeah you know it's funny because you'll run into these coaches and and obviously the media you get that that limited window into who that coach at least wants how that coach wants to be perceived publicly that doesn't necessarily mean that that captures who that coach is right. entirely, right? I mean, it's, it's kind of absurd for us to think of it. And at the same time, I build perception the same way. You know, you see a coach, the way he behaves on the sideline. You see a coach uh, and the way he interacts with the, with the media and press conferences, et cetera. And all of a sudden, I just expand that experience to his whole waking life and the idea that that's the way that they would always be. Uh, and it's just kind of silly to think that uh, even the rest of us, I know I wouldn't want to be perceived by a five-minute soundbite or, or, or a five-minute press conference or even 15, but you're, you're right. Uh, a lot of these coaches, they may be perceived one way, and I think in a lot of ways it's intentional. And I would be shocked if Coach Saban was anything other than very intentional in everything that he does. Um, but away from the microphone, the, the cameras, uh, and the flashbulbs, uh, in some ways, he's kind of an understated guy. I mean, uh, I've there have been instances where you kind of have to lean in to make sure you're you're hearing what it is that that he has to say. But you're right, there's a lot more layers to that onion uh, than just X's and O's, and you know, some player getting blowtorched on his way to the sideline for bu- busting an assignment. He's a he's a, a really charismatic guy. You have to be. I mean, at some point in time, you know that you're constantly trying to attract and endear yourself to. You know, 17, 18 year old, now, you know, even younger than that, 16 year old kids, you can't just be this despotic figure on the side of the on the sidelines at all times i don't know that that's overly attractive and i don't think that that's necessarily who he is no i think a lot of folks are going to see a side of coach saban they've never seen before if they've never seen him actually publicly speak so talk ticket ticket prices uh, do you sell them individually do you have to buy a table how does that work and then we'll get into the sponsorship side you can you can buy tickets they're 200 dollars each the tables are you can seat 12 folks okay table sponsorships 2400 dollars okay you could be a gold sponsor for 5000 That gives you uh, recognition in all our printed materials. It'll give you signage. It gives your name and logo at all the ta- at the table. And, of course, there'll be a more preferred seating arrangement and a plat- platinum sponsorship, which we anticipate will be uh, occupied relatively soon but still available. So, uh, so a great opportunity not just for huge fans that want to come see Coach Saban speak, but for some businesses that would like to get their name out, out there supporting – the foundation supporting the Hall of Fame, supporting the community. There's no doubt. It's it's more than just two-pronged, obviously. If you are a business that exists, operates, or has locations in Gwinnett County, it makes all the sense in the world to want to be supportive of such a noble cause. And beyond that, the cold calculus says that if you're interested in any type of leadership capacity, leadership development, business development, uh, there's a reason why the speakers that have been a part of these nights, and Nick Saban is probably the best example, are very coveted in other contexts and in other conferences. It's because the things that they've learned from uh, in, in their experiences as coaches, it makes a lot of sense in various other industries and economies. So think that there's uh, multiple points of relevance but ultimately at the end of the day the reason why we're doing this is to recognize you know outstanding achievement and to harness that interest on behalf of the students in uh, Gwinnett County. And as you said at the very beginning of the show too to raise money for a great cause the Gwinnett County Public Schools Foundation. So I would assume this is all tax write-off you write you you can write this off your taxes if you're a company or an individual. On the advice of counsel that is correct (laughs) yes Yes. (laughs) all this it's like being at a congressional hearing. We tried our best to get somebody else to join us on the program and she just said no so instead she's kind of orchestrating from behind you that's right that's 
That's right. But yes, yeah, yeah. So, so this is, yeah, it, it would be a, a non, not-for-profit contribution and just a, an opportunity to, uh, in a very meaningful way, give back to an important cause. All right, let's give all the basic details again, Matt, and then we'll make sure we give the website where people can go to sign up for sponsorships or, or tickets or get any kind of information. This is the 10th anniversary Gwinnett County Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony and dinner, Wednesday, May 1st, 2019. And I want to get the year in in case of people on the podcast are listening after. Because if you miss it in 2019, I'm pretty sure there'll be an 11 we'll to 1 in 2020. There's, there's a lot of folks that deserve to be in this thing. So Absolutely. It's going to be here at the Sinesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta, which is on Pleasant Hill Road in Duluth. So it's very convenient right off I-85 and for a great cause. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And, of course, Nick Saban will be the featured speaker. So to get tickets, to find out about sponsorships, where can people go to get that information? So they go to the best way probably is to visit the website. Website. It's www.gcps dash, not slash, dash foundation.org, then a slash events. So that's gcps dash foundation.org slash events. That's the best way. You can get tickets that way. You can also garner the, the sponsorships, as we mentioned, at those levels would make a lot of sense, especially the fact that you can bring a group and they can all experience. Uh, this evening uh, for a very worthy cause and, and an exceptional speaker. Well, Matt, appreciate you coming by. We appreciate uh, Donna helping out and uh, right. making this all happen as well on sh- yeah. very short notice, by the way. And uh, we'll have to get you and David Green to come on back and talk about your insurance brokerage on Gwinnett Business Radio. Actually talk some business one day and talk about that side of your life. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, we'd love to. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on May 1st. Yep, I look forward to it, Mike. Thanks so much. All right, uh, Matt Stinchcomb, our guest here, talking about the Gwinnett County Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony and dinner on Wednesday, May 1st. Go to the website, and it's going to be a great, great night, an unforgettable night. So I want to thank Matt. want to thank Donna for setting this up. And want to thank all our listeners. Until next time, Mike Salmon, and this is Gwinnett Business Radio on Business Radio X. 